Hey everyone, it's Curious and welcome back to my channel. So if you don't know, I go to American University in Washington, D.C. I'm a sophomore, kind of technically junior because I'm graduating a year early. But still, I've been on campus now for a little while and so I thought I'd answer kind of some questions I frequently hear people have about the school and whatnot and try to just give my honest kind of opinion on everything. So without further ado, let's just get into it. The first topic I'll talk about is the campus. So not everyone gets to obviously come to campus and visit so i'll talk about my experience on it the campus is pretty small like if you've ever been to a state school it is so much smaller than that like you can get from one end to the next in 10 minutes and all the buildings are pretty easy to navigate it took me like a short amount of time to really like learn the campus ins and outs um there's a building for each college on campus and then there's the residence halls across campus as well so that kind of breaks it all apart and then there's a centralized building called the Mary Graydon Center MGC and that has all like basically the food places on campus not everything but most of them and then it has the dining hall TDR although the campus is small it is really pretty especially in the springtime with like cherry blossoms and everything the one thing I will say is the location of the school I feel like on the website and stuff they say it's in the heart of DC and it's really not. It's, it's in the heart of the suburbs. Yeah, that's my roommate hope, but it, it's really just in the suburbs. It's in a very residential, wealthy area of DC, Tenley Town. And so. Which, which, it is important to note, is not the most pleasant past like 8 p.m. Yeah, yeah. Tenley Town isn't. Awesome. I I'm not like itching to get to Tenley Town. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like Tenley Town has all the basics. So it has like a Target, it has food places. So like I get Chipotle all the time. There's a Kava restaurant, Five Guys, like things like that. But other than that, it's it's really just like a little strip that just has like the basics. It's not like downtown DC at all. There's no like bars or clubs or anything like that in Tenley Town. There is a shuttle that takes you from campus to Tenley Town, but it doesn't always come very quickly. Sometimes you'll wait for like 15 minutes to get the shuttle. The times aren't always accurate. It's very frustrating, but it does take you there, which is nice. But yeah, so what you do is if you're on campus, you take the shuttle to get to Tenley Town, which there is a metro stop, which is really nice. Or you can take the bus, but the metro is just a little bit easier to navigate, I would say. And then you have to take the metro to downtown or to wherever you're trying to go. I'd say the process takes between like 30 and 40 minutes depending on where you want to go. Like if you're trying to get to DuPont or down like to L Street, U Street, things like that, it takes a while. And same with going to Georgetown, you have to take the bus there and it's like a 30, 40 minute process. So if you're coming to the school thinking you're going to be like in the heart of DC and you can go do whatever, like just know it's really not. If that's what you're looking for, I'd probably recommend GW, which is definitely more downtown and centralized than American is. Okay, the next thing I'll be talking about are parties. So I, everyone kind of wants to know like, oh, what's the party scene like? Blah, blah, blah. They don't really, yeah, they don't really talk about it like on the tours because you're not gonna promote that. But the part, like the party scene it is non-existent here really. Like there are a few apartment parties and the frats do have parties occasionally, but they're not great. It's, like, it's, not <laughs> it's, 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 it's a, a bar, bar and club school. school. Like yeah. basically everyone just goes to bars and clubs downtown, which unless you are 21, then you can't get into anyway. So it kind of sucks because you really can't go to a lot of events. Yeah, so like Fridays and Saturdays, most people will go downtown, go to like St. Ives, Abigail's, Saks. There's like a few oh, different really places cool. and we'll get in. They do have 18 plus clubs, which I've only been to one, but I was in like the roped off section and it was, it was I was chilling with my friends, so it was fine. But it's kind of weird because you're like around 35 year old men and they just go there and it's kind of uncomfortable. So I just haven't heard great things about them. I haven't been on like the central floor of those 18 plus clubs, but I've heard they're really not great and they're not super fun. There are too some 18 plus events run through Greek life on campus. So I've been to this one called Soundcheck which they had like a DJ come in and play a set. And so that was super fun and, and you could get into that. So Greek Life does have events and stuff like that as well, but if you're not involved in Greek Life or 
if you don't know anyone, then you really can't get in. So that's the perfect segue into the next topic of discussion, which is Greek life. <laughs> so interestingly enough, I doubt they talk about this on the tours as well, but there is a huge divide in on campus about Greek life. So a lot of people are involved in Greek life in a sorority or frat, and there's a whole other group who is trying to abolish Greek life on campus. So it creates a lot of tension amongst the two groups and the school's administration on the topic, but something to be aware of because if you do want to go to a school and be involved in Greek life, there will be people who will not like you because of that and vice versa. So if that's something you want to be involved in, just be aware. And also know that it is a big part of campus in my experience. I remember listening on the tour and they said they are there are some sororities and frats, but it's not that big of a deal. Like, I think that's a total lie. Like sororities and, and frats are everywhere on campus. They have events all the time. And if you don't know a friend, you like can't go to them. And like so many people are involved, so I just would say that's not true at all. So if you don't want to get involved in Greek life or don't like it, I don't recommend going to this school. So yeah. And I'll also add that if you want like a normal Greek life experience, like a lot of like the state schools have, that this isn't a great school for you because the stories and frats are very different here. And so it's just not the same as it is at other places. And I don't provide my opinion on anything because I'm not involved, I like to say, out of it. But um, I just think it's a, important to be aware of because a lot of people like to get involved in those things and aren't aware of what it's going to be like if they come to this campus because just different. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> the next thing I will be discussing is making friends. The first like couple months I was here, it was because it, I was here because of COVID and so not a lot of people were here and so I really just did not make friends and it sucked. Um, but as I got along on campus, I've, I've made a lot of friends and it's been great. Um, but I do think it was challenging. It wasn't super easy for me to meet people. Um, I definitely met people through mutual friends through class through the gym things like that i'm not super involved in like clubs and stuff just because i have my jobs and things like that so i don't really have time to spend in clubs um but i do know a lot of people make a lot of friends through greek life and it's a really great way to do that so there are two different kinds and so there's some that are like for your career and you can and get in those i don't really know anyone that's in those but yeah, so there's a lot of different ways you can get involved and do stuff like that. And there are a lot of clubs on campus. I just not into those kind of things. I would say like for me or for a lot of people at this school, it's this is like a stepping stone kind of school to get to the next point in your life. Yeah, that's like, so true. Like it's not like, oh, like University of like University of Maryland, like best four years of my life. Like, no, it's like this yeah. is where I went to go to law school. Yeah, that's so true. So everyone here is very career focused. If you're someone who's just like going to college to have a good time, like this is definitely not the school for you. Yeah. Everyone here is like, I wanna be the next president of the United States. I wanna be a senator. I wanna do this, I wanna do that. Like everyone knows what they wanna do. And so it's super intimidating, honestly, but they're not here to just like have a good time and do whatever. They're here to advance their careers, get internships, make connections like that's what they're here for and so again if that's your vibe not the school it's, for you yeah it's like a very academic yeah focus. very academic focused there's not a lot of like crazy partying stuff like that yeah. and going along with that sports and school spirit are just not huge here there's basically the biggest teams are probably basketball and soccer field hockey I think we don't have a football team yeah we don't have a football team it. And we're, we're not, not allowed to have, one. yeah, we're not allowed to have one. And so basically there's just no, there's no like Friday, Saturday football whole thing. It's just not that like people, you don't see people wearing like school colors around. Like it's just not that kind of school. It's not like when you picture college in high school or you watch movies of college, it's not like that at no. all. Okay, so I'm just gonna say this because they don't talk about it on the tours at all. And I think we're literally voted the number one liberal school in America at this point. I think I'm not a huge person into politics it's just not I'm not super interested in it like whatever I you know research stuff when I need to but I'm not super involved but the mo the majority of people on this campus are extremely involved in politics and there's nothing wrong with that 
it's just, it, it's what they like, but it's something to be aware of if you're coming to this school and you don't like politics or you aren't super liberal. It's just something to be aware of. It's a huge part of life here. Wait, do you guys hear that? Another thing to be aware of, you will hear sirens every single day. Okay, next, talking about food on campus. So this is the one I feel most strongly about because I am a picky eater. I'm not the pickiest, but I am picky and I hate the food here. Like, I'll just be real. I don't like it. There are not enough options. And though there's one dining hall on campus, one teeny tiny dining hall. And it's the same options every night and they have the weirdest food <laughs> options. Like, I'm so sorry if you're watching this and you work in the dining hall. I respect the work you do. So I'm someone who after a workout, I only eat good chicken, like seasoned chicken, breast, rice, and broccoli, right? You would think that is a staple of the dining hall meals, but it's not. And so I struggle a lot finding food I want. They always have meatloaf, pulled pork, some weird like lentil things with kale and spinach and, and, and reading it, it sounds super good. And then you get there and it looks like, I, I don't even know. I, I lose my appetite and I end up trying to eat half a piece of chicken if they have it and then eating french fries and then leaving and so yeah. I've barely been I, eating I, I will say if you are vegetarian or vegan there are a lot of options for and you and kosher there are a lot of kosher yeah, options yeah there are they do respect like people's dietary needs but I just don't think there's and enough the options for the amount of students that there are yes. on campus and the pasta station is always a hit like I just don't like missed. pasta so I guess that's but a the mean meats? issue they're always out of food like Subway's out of bread half the time out of vegetables. You go to that bagel place and by 12 o'clock they're out of bagels. I just don't, <laughs> I, I, I haven't been place. eating. I have not been eating. All I can stomach is Chipotle. It is the only thing I like to eat. I literally get it five times a week. And I'll go to TDR sometimes. The one place on campus I love is the sushi and smoothie bowl place. That place is gas. It's really but good. you have to go before 2 p.m. But you have to go or they run out of sushi. They're open till like five or six and they run out of sushi by 3.45. I don't know. I'm not trying to complain, but I'm trying to express that if you are someone who is picky, this is not the school for you because you will be hungry and you are forced to get a meal plan if you live on campus. Yeah, some schools have some really good food programs, at least more options. I think what I struggle with most is just that we're forced to have a hundred block meal plan and yet we don't have that many options. And I just don't think that's very fair. If you're gonna require a meal plan, then there should be tons of options for students, especially because so many students are required to have it. And I think that we should have a second dining hall because just having the one dining hall, I just don't think that's enough personally. But that's my thoughts on the food here. I appreciate the food options and that being able to get food but for the price I'm paying, I think there should be more I options. I 100% agree that for the price, it's absolutely Because it's very expensive. So, yeah. That's another thing to mention. This school is very expensive. And not only just the tuition and all of that, but living in DC is very pricey. Like I was talking to our friend Jess the other day and we're saying how if you like go out to dinner, you're at least spending $25 for yourself like every time. It's it's no, like there is no place here that is inexpensive except for Falafel Inc. and Georgetown where you can get like a $5 sandwich. But other than that, like it is so expensive to live here and just everything is marked up just because of the location, yeah, so. it's like a trade off. Like yeah. you're in DC, it's really, really cool to be here. There's so many things to do and there are a lot of free things to do. Like it's worth it. Best it's best. worth it for me. But if you're someone who's really cost conscious, yeah, then, it, then it's, it's not. Like, yeah, it's something to think you're about. You're gonna have to spend more money than you would if you lived in, if you went to like UFD and like College Park. Yeah, definitely. But the next thing I'm gonna talk about is things to do. So kind of going along with what she said. In DC, there are so many things to do. Although the city is smaller than you think it is, there are so many museums, so many events, so many concerts, clubs, parks, like so much to do. You can always find something to do on the weekends, which I really, really love, because coming from a small town, that's what drove me insane, is I could never find anything to do. But now I can kind of just take my backpack and go off somewhere for the day, and I love that. There's so many places to explore and see. So that's a huge plus of being here. Okay, next up, classes. So class sizes are really small, which is really nice. You really develop 
a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your professor. A lot of them have a lot of availability outside of class too, so if you have questions or whatever, you can meet with them. If you want to talk about your career, internship, stuff like that, they have a lot of flexibility. A lot of them also really give great advice about career stuff. So I had a professor last semester that I'm actually doing an internship with this semester, and he was so helpful in helping me kind of plan for my future and stuff like that. So there are really a lot of professors that really, really care about you and value your time and really want the best for you, which is really, really awesome. And I don't think you'd get that at a bigger school where you have classes of 100, 200 people, but when, you're at, when you have such small classes here, you can really do that in literally every single one of your classes. You do have prerequisites just like any other school, but they're called something different here. They're called habits of mind. So instead of taking like bio as your science class, you take a habits of mind course for science and they're different, I don't know. So next year I'm doing like a health and wellness one. You have to do a history one. You have to do a creative aesthetic one, stuff like that. So those are required. You do have an AUX class freshman year. You have two of those and they're about diversity and inclusion, I believe. And then you have like a seminar course you have to take freshman year. But overall, I mean, the classes are good. You can really plan your schedule around. I like that. They're an hour and 15 minutes twice a week, or you can do a two and a half hour block class once a week. The blocks are sometimes really challenging, but most professors give you a break, which is super nice. Advising is really good at the school too. They have a lot of avail availability and they're really helpful. Oh, and the other thing I could talk about is study abroad. So if you want to study abroad, this is what sold me on this school too. They have a really great program here for basically every college on the campus. And I'm going to be studying abroad next year. And you basically work with your advisor and develop it into your schedule. And then you just apply like the semester before. But so many people do it. It's like the norm here to do it like your, your junior year spring semester. So I really like that. If you really want to do that, there's so many opportunities to do that here. So I really recommend that. Okay, so those are kind of all the things I can think about for this school. But obviously, if you have any more questions, you can comment them down below or DM me on Instagram at KirstenRay underscore. I do get some DMs sometimes, people asking me about my experience here, which I think is super cool. I love talking about it. Overall, I really have enjoyed my experience here at AU. Just, I just want people to be aware of things before they, you know, invest in their future. Because obviously, it's college is really expensive and you want to enjoy the experience as much as possible. And there's just things you should be aware of before going into that and taking that leap. And not everyone can go visit their college before actually signing the document, you know, because some people live across the United States or whatever. So I think videos like this can be really helpful in just kind of giving an honest perspective on the school. But overall, I've loved my experience here and I'm excited for the next year ahead. Anyways, please like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next week for my next video. Bye!